Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. Each week the developers take four questions posed by you, the community, they answer those questions and then post the responses to the official Eve Echoes Facebook page, Twitter account, Discord and somewhere deep in the recesses of the game as well which can be accessed via your ship's AI and then looking for Q&A. I like to go through these each week, through the questions and the answers, and add my own personal opinions alongside information that I may have from previous dev Q&As, developer AMAs on Discord, and from indeed just talking to the developers on the nearly daily basis that I do now. Ultimately, this allows me to give some insight into the direction the game might be taking, and just give my opinions on to what should come and what shouldn't come. Of course, though, these are just my personal opinions. You may have your own, and I'd love to hear them in the comment section down below. And speaking of being heard, if you want a question to be answered by the developers, there is a link in the description of this very video that will take you through to a Google form that you can fill in. That will ask the developers the question. If yours is chosen to be responded to, not only do you get an answer, not only do you feature in my video, you'll also win a month of Basic Omega. Now, on the subject of winning Omega, every week I give out three combo Omegas to various different people. I give one to a random commenter here on YouTube, so make sure you are commenting on my videos, and I give two out to people active in the public areas of my Discord, so make sure you go into the description of this video, join my Discord, and start the conversation there as well. Finally, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know, hit like, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and if you want to go the extra mile to help keep me doing what I do, well, you can support me on Patreon and Redbubble. Again, both linked in the description down below. All that said and done then, I do apologise in advance. There is going to be one particularly ranty part of this video. Some of you love that, some of you hate it, but hey, warning ahead of time. Let's jump right in then to the developer Q&A here for the week of the 8th to 14th of June. Battleships were so weak now, says question one. Oh boy. As all, uh, as all know, one hunting cruiser can catch one battleship so easily, but battleship, which class gap is only one with capital ship, could never catch capital ship. I think battleships need buffs such as increase their HP or DPS that can't catch easily from cruisers or etc. Now the response here, given by Lance Dodd of all people, I'm afraid this change will not be made at this point, hallelujah. The reason is that the combat stats of cruisers, battleships and capital ships with PvP fittings are in line with our expectations. We also think it's reasonable that a PvE fitting battleship cannot defeat a PvP fitting cruiser in a 1v1 battle. And this is very much the point here. Eve runs on a, I want to call it rock, paper, scissors, but it's more rock, paper, lizard, scissors, Spock um, in the fact that it's got five of these different things and then capitals become their own separate thing outside of this. What you need to understand is that essentially everything can punch very well one class down. It can punch pretty well, given exceptions, two classes down and it should be impossible below that. Therefore, a, a cruiser, for example, should be able to easily destroy destroyers, but it should be able to destroy frigates, but with, you know, a specialised fitting. Battle cruisers, on the other hand, absolutely wreck cruisers, but should struggle against uh, destroyers, and this is usually because cruisers will have tracking bonuses, um, whereas battle cruisers tend to be more for range and sort of heavier firepower. Battleships, then following this same blueprint, will absolutely wreck battle cruisers, would deal okay against cruisers, assuming they are fit for the task, but would struggle against destroyers and frigates. And I would actually argue that battleships at this point are probably a little bit too good against cruisers, destroyers, and frigates for the most part anyway. This also then works down, I've missed the two classes at the bottom, that frigates um, ultimately are very good at dealing with battleships because they can get under the guns, or that's the idea, and then destroyers absolutely wreck frigates but suffer against cruisers. That's the kind of rock, paper, scissors that's going on here. Um, Capitals then exist outside of that. Dreadnoughts are supposed to be designed for killing other capitals. Dreadnoughts kill dreadnoughts, dreadnoughts kill carriers. Carriers, on the other hand, are then designed to take out subcapitals. Carriers are the capital class of ship designed to destroy subcapital ships. So this concept here that ultimately a capital ship could uh, a battleship could never catch a capital ship despite it only being one down. Yeah, they actually kind of can to a certain degree. You could theoretically, I've seen like close fights on this where a typhoon can basically tank, um, so a speed tank something 
like a range fit revelation as X, uh, as virtual xpg will tell you that ultimately the revelation and capitals still absolutely punch below their weight just fine but that's the point capital class and sub capital class are not part of the same balancing metrics you don't put capitals in that circle of the five other tonnages what we have here is someone who once again is flying a battleship and thinks that that should be able to handle pretty much everything and it's telling that the only exception they're willing to make for that is that yeah okay maybe as a battleship i should be caught by capitals yeah that's because those capitals can't enter the same content that you're doing now isn't it what we're talking about here is someone who clearly is running low sec encounters and is getting hunted by people like lord cobra in a bellicose 3 covert ops and getting wrecked by him. Ultimately, that's by design. As Lance Dot actually says here, the point is that a PvP cruiser should be able to take out a PvE battleship, because a battleship is able to punch effectively one down to battle cruisers, but should struggle at two down, which is cruisers, especially if the cruiser is designed for something that the battleship is not. The battleship for PvE is not designed for taking out PvP cruisers. So, that is its weakness. If you are insistent on this idea that battleships should be capable of dealing with everything that you throw at them, you end up in a situation where battleships are just simply the best at everything. And if a battleship is simply the best at everything, what the heck is the reason to fly anything else? Like seriously, think about this a second. If the battleship is more than comfortable with a PvE fit as it currently is, of essentially ignoring frigates and destroyers because it can just neutralize them, or heck, even a battleship Nosferatu will very quickly flatten the capacitor of a frigate or a destroyer, if it can then also quite comfortably deal with cruisers that are fit for PvP, it can also, by design, deal with battle cruisers. What is the what actually is the counter to a battleship? Well, it's only another battleship, really, isn't it? At which point, if your battleship can uh, can comfortably counter anything that you can throw at it, and it's the best option for PvE with that same fit, why the hell would you fly anything else? And in that direction lies absolutely god-awful game design and balance, and I am so glad to see that Lance Dot here basically says, no, no, stop complaining, learn to play the game. And that is simply the point here. If you are a battleship pilot in low sec, absolutely you can do that content. You just need to be careful. You know, if you're being scanned or you see people in the same system as you, you might want to dock up or get to a safe point, yeah? That's kind of the point here, that there are counters on the table. You just don't want to take those counters because those counters require you to actually watch the game rather than just go into auto orbit and auto fire back and just run that encounter. You don't want to have to engage with the game and its actual systems. You just want to press the one button, which is undock and I win. Simple as that. I'm so glad to see Lance Dot here basically say, tell this idea where the heck to get off because I am massively against this. Massively massively, massively against it, as is anyone who gives an absolute crying damn about anything in the game other than freaking battleships. It's it's becoming a bit of a joke at this point, really, isn't it? It's the common meme that everyone flies battleships, and then some people have skills in other ship types as well. Unless you are a dedicated PvPer, then you might be super deep into something smaller. But the basic line is, right now, battleships are already too good, and just because in your head you think that your battleship should be able to take out a cruiser, that is terrible game design. Developers say no, let's move on. Question number two, please can you add a counter to the matching page in war games so you can see how many people there are in the queue? Q. Thanks for your suggestion, says Tellus Fox, our resident PvP fanatic. In response to the problem that the waiting time for faction games is relatively long, in the short term we'll add the feature to display the number of people in queue. In the long term we'll also develop new modes and well plan the entering stage for different modes. Now, this is an interesting one. The fact that the recent update has actually made it so that you can join faction war games from your own personal citadel or from nullsec uh, outposts and things like that, that, you should actually find that more people are willing to jump into PvP now, into faction war games. The trouble, I think, with faction war games at the moment is that it is very limited. It's a pretty set standard, same old, same old game mode. Um, I don't think, though, that the actual answer to getting the queue time shorter is to develop new modes. Not directly, at least. I think some people are like, oh, new modes. This means that when I go in, I can choose which mode I do. 
that's not a good idea. Having new modes stirs up interest, yes, but you still need those windows when the game is actually playable. Otherwise, you're just splitting the community between those two modes. This is why games like, for example, Apex Legends will have a situation where the new exciting modes are limited time modes, LTMs. Because simply put, if you've got one million people all joining for a match, and the game is going to match make those accordingly, let's just assume that they are all of equal skill. All one million people are of equal skill. There's one million people in that queue, right? So queue times should be pretty short, because a million divided by 60 people into the match, and boom, off you go. The trouble is, the second you start adding other game modes at the same time, you're splitting that community. Maybe only a third of them want to do mode A, a third of them want to do mode B, and a third of them want to do mode C. Now, with a big number like a million people playing, you should still have fairly good queue times. But now imagine it's only 100 people playing. Only 30 of them want to do uh, mode A, 30 want to do mode B, and 30 want to do mode C. And yes, I know that's 90. I'm going with easier numbers here. Ultimately, those queues, if you've now got a mode that, say, uses eight people, well, that doesn't round into 30, does it? Which means that you now have a situation where some people are going to be waiting for one of those matches to finish before the next one begins, whereas if all of them, if all 90 people were in those, people get faster queue times. You're just literally splitting people between different queues, which will inevitably extend them. This is why Faction War Games only has that sort of two hour at a time window opening. It's to keep those queue times short. If it was just open at any time, well, yeah, you'd get the same thing. So I'd like to see new modes added, but I would like to see them be on sort of a rotating timer um, to give that option for people to choose which ones they want to go into without nerfing queue times. Question number three. If and when are NPC stations going to be removed from Nullsec? Oh boy, it's the second one. I can hear Bradrick screaming in the distance already. <laughs> Not to include ITT stations, ITC stations. Having this safe space for others to take refuge and essentially squat in territory with no other repercussions, or even changing the mechanic of exploiting station games and able to dock when scrambled. All while you can't dock when scrambled on a POS or Citadel. Yeah, you know what? I do agree that you shouldn't be able to dock when scrambled. Um, that is one I will actually agree with here, but getting rid of NPC stations... <sighs> this is the whole point of Nullsec is not dangerous, so pe people aren't losing ships, but then you want to make it safer? Like, genuinely, you want to make this safer? I get the frustration of, like, someone undocking and then just docking back up and undocking and docking back up over and over again. It's frustrating. That should be changed. But removing NPC stations doesn't necessarily fix that. There are easier fixes, which is the whole, yeah, no docking up when you're scrammed. Fair point. Fair point on that one. But getting rid of uh, ITC, uh, getting rid of the stations, uh, the NPC stations, I will get my words out, I promise. Getting rid of NPC stations in Nullsec is basically people's way of saying, I don't want to ever have to deal with pirates ever again. I want to have a notification when they are 30 jumps out and coming down the pipe towards my system so that we can tell everyone to dock up. And then those same people are going to sit there and go, why aren't the industrials building new ships? And it's because nothing's getting destroyed anymore, is it? Because you want to play the safe game. You need ship destruction. And ultimately, Nullsec... Nullsex NPC stations give that additional risk. They've talked about this in AMAs in the past, that Nullsex stations give pirates a place to dock up and rest. And now that we have the whole thing with jump clones, I'm looking forward to seeing some pirates dock up at NPC stations with a load of separate ships, and then just be able to jump clone between the ones that they want whenever they freaking want. That, to me, is going to be an awesome change, and I am all here for it. If you want your Nullsec to be safer, then maybe you should put people to set up gate camps on choke points coming in. Maybe you should have people who are out and roaming, not just safe ratting in a home system. Go ratting, go running in systems that are five, six jumps away from your station. That way, when you see a red or a grey to come through local, you can scout and shout it out to everyone else, right? That's the point we're getting at here. There is gameplay that you are basically trying to remove by getting rid of NPC stations. So, yeah, good. Um, what does Lance Dot say? 
there are currently no plans to remove the Nullsec station. However, regarding the fact that being unable to dock the station when scrambled can indeed avoid the excessive protection for combat players, we will consider making this change. Yeah, that one Lance Dot, I am all for. I do also think that we need to get rid of things like log-off traps, we need something to be done with um, like cloaking, just being super safe. Um, ZRQ have been doing this quite a bit recently and I've got to admit, it's clever, it's just annoying. They will have someone cloaked in system, usually about three kilometers off, uh, off a station. They will sit there cloaked in some kind of interdictorship, standard cloak, and they will watch whoever's undocking. And if that person jumps off to a ratting anomaly, then they alert their friends that, oh, there's a, you know, a juicy target in system. At which point, they then drop an interdictor sphere. Um, all their friends log in into that system. The person sees all of these reds coming into system. They jump back to station only to get caught in the interdiction sphere and destroyed. Now, there's very little you can do about this other than developing safe points in your own systems, which I absolutely think is a viable thing. I think if you're ratting in a Macariel or whatever, you should have a safe point in your system that when you see reds coming, you can jump to that, not to the station. Or in cases of like uh, Alliance, Alliance space, you jump to a safe space, you then look around you at where everyone else is, and then you consider jumping to a different Capsuleer outpost. It's why you'll find that in Void Space, most Capsuleer outposts are free for anyone in the Alliance to dock up at, because it gives you options rather than just jumping back to the one station in system, the Citadel, and getting blown up because of it. Ultimately, counterplay. That's what I'm looking for here, and I think that is a brilliant thing here, that yes, if someone undocks and gets scrambled, they should be held in position. Simple as that. You shouldn't be able to dock up with those. Although, admittedly, even in EVE Online, you can dock up when scrambled for the most part. Um, it's why we have things like safe docking bookmarks and, and things like that. But yeah, anyway, I think that was a really good change. I will personally ping Lance Dot and be like, yes, do that. This is such a good change. Finally then, fleets are crucial for a full cooperative multiplayer experience in Ebecos, and I could not agree more. Would it be possible to enhance the fleet interface to add additional information about fleet member status, whether logged in, in what system, etc? That's genuinely a really good change. I like that. That yes, you should see, I think like World of Warcraft used to do this, that if you were in party, you would see people down the side on their icons, and then the icons would go grey if they were logged out and things like that. Yeah, seeing that different ship icons turn grey when someone is logged off, or go, say, a different colour entirely when they're not in the same system, you could then tap on them and see what system they're in. Like, there are ways that that could be abused, for example, but I think that's generally a pretty good thing. I would like that change, rather than having to say to people, who's where, how far away are you, how many jumps out are you, that kind of situation. Being able to just tap as a fleet commander and see that information is going to be really awesome. Paulin says, we're iterating the fleet system now. Huzzah! The features that will be added soon are features for the player's convenience, such as battle statistics and command response statistics. In the near future, the interface will also be iterated and the fleet statistics panel will be added to the game. That's awesome. I think this is a quality of life change. It's not a 100% necessary thing, um, and I'm glad to see that it is still on the development, especially since the Trello is still notably empty. They have not updated it since May. Um, nothing exists on that Trello for June, July onwards, um, but it's nice to see what kind of things they are considering. We know there's going to be some new awesome stuff coming in the August update for the anniversary, and it's nice to see that there's still some quality of life stuff like this overhauling the fleet. We've just seen the NES store overhauled. It's much easier to navigate now, in my opinion. It's much clearer. You can see what the items you're buying contain a lot easier and stuff like that. So these quality of life changes and smoothing out the user experience, I think is really, really good. Anyway, folks, that's it for this week's developer Q&A. Battleships should never be the be-all, end-all of the game. They are already way too close to that. If you are finding that you are losing your battleships, you need to consider your playstyle. And you know what? Heck, if you do lose some battleships, here's another idea. Get the heck over it. Seriously, EVE is a game about losing your ships. If you can't handle the fact that sometimes your ship gets blown up, just dock up, use those billions of insurance points that you're holding on to because apparently you've never lost a ship before, and then get back out there, learn from it, and get on with it. Simple as that. 
Anyway, folks, that's been Ranty Benzie for another developer Q&A. Remember, ask your questions in the, dis uh, the description down below. Click the link, ask your questions to developers. Any ones that are chosen, win a month of Basic Omega. Make sure you're commenting on my videos, not just this one, all Eve Echoes videos I put up. One of those comments each week is to uh, chosen to win a month of Combo Omega and join the Cat Skull Discord linked in the description as well. Two people every week on that Discord win a month of Combo Omega as well. Anyway, folks, that's been me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.